had the biggest victory of his professional career. And a lot of people are discussing and pondering how good of a fighter is Isa Cruz. What level is he on? Who can he beat? Who beats him at his current weight class? Does he compete with the other champions in his weight class? In this video, I'll be breaking down Isa Cruz's resume, how he's looked in those fights, and how I expect him to do in the future, and just my overall assessment of him as a fighter. So, Isa Cruz record 26 wins, 2 losses, 1 draw, 18 wins by knockout. He has 2 defeats in his career, 1 defeat very early in his career to a man named Luis Montano Alvarez, which is on points, unanimous decision, and then a more recent win in December of 2021 to Gervonta Tank Davis. Since then, he's gone on a little bit of a tear, and even prior to that, he was on a little bit of a run. And a lot of people are really wondering how good of a fighter is this guy. He's officially a world champion, no fake title, no secondary belt. He's officially a champion after his eighth round TKO victory against Rolando Romero, which I was picking him to do. I think most of us were. I think I couldn't really see any way Roley could beat Esau Cruz. I knew Cruz was going to beat him. I don't remember how I was picking him to win. I believe eighth round TKO sounds about accurate, though. So. When you look at his resume and you look at how good of a fighter is he is, right? Prior to fighting Tank, he first came on the scene against Diego Magdaleno, and he absolutely decimated him. He knocked him out in a round, 53 seconds. It was a great performance, and he brought a lot of hype to himself. Now, after this, he has a pretty forgettable matchup in March of 21 against a man named Jose Matias Romero, where he won a very competitive unanimous decision win where he did not look very impressive. He really struggled to gain much of a rhythm in that fight. He never really had Romero necessarily hurt. And it wasn't an impressive win in my opinion. That same Romero got absolutely dominated by Robesi Ramirez and stopped. Robesi dominated the entire fight and stopped him in the ninth round. And he also got absolutely dominated by Mikel Rivera, losing 100-90 to in all three judges' scorecards right after the Isak Cruz fight seven months later. So that was a fight that didn't make Isak Cruz look very good. And after that, once again, Isak Cruz just did not impress. He took on Francisco Vargas a completely washed version of Francisco Vargas. This is not the Vargas that fought Orlando Salido, or that fought Miura, that fought even Miguel Burchelt the first time around. This is a completely washed up version of that man, and he won a very wide decision and dropped him in the process, but it was not impressive at all. And honestly, prior to the Tank fight, when that fight was made, I was picking Tank to dominate Cruz. I was picking him to win a very easy TKO. I was saying Tank sixth round, where he'd be completely up on the cards, dominate and get the stoppage. Now, Cruz proved me and many others completely wrong in that bout. He gave Gervonta Tank Davis by far his most competitive fight. He's the only man in modern times to bring Tank the entire distance. Tank never dropped him. He never hurt him. I know Tank claimed to have an injury, and I do believe he did have an injury in that fight. But even then, I feel an injured Tank Davis is still a very dangerous and very strong fighter. And I personally had that fight scored a draw. I had the fight scored 114 to 114. On box track, the average scorecard for that fight is 115 to 114. So either seven rounds to five for Tank or six rounds apiece. This was a very competitive and a very close fight. And I feel that this fight solidifies that Isak Cruz is not just hype. I want to cut to the chase right now before breaking down the rest of his fights. Isak Cruz is not just hype. He's not a hype job. I think anyone who believes that still at this point is pretty delusional. Now, is he a guy that is inconsistent at times and could be beaten by the top guys for sure. Do I view him as the weakest champ at 140? Yes, I do. I would pick Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, and Subriel Matias. I would pick all three of them to beat Isa Cruz. Now, is Isa Cruz a very respectable champion? And does he belong in the ring with those guys? Yes, he is not levels below any of them. He would give all of them competitive matchups. Let's continue. He demolishes Yoriokis Gamboa, stops him in the fifth round. Now, even though Gamboa was washed up at this point, he proved to be a very tricky guy to get out of there. He's not a guy that was getting stopped. It took Tank 12 rounds to stop him. And right after the Tank fight, he went 12 rounds of Devin Haney and made it a very ugly, awkward, and boring fight where Haney did not have any momentum. He never dropped Gamboa and never hurt him. After this, he took a year and a half layoff and then got decimated by Cruz. Cruz stopped him quicker than anyone stopped him. And I understand Gamboa was washed up, but Cruz did genuinely look really good in this matchup. Better than I expected him to. I picked him to stop him, but I thought he would go to the 7th, 8th round. And... He looked really good in that fight. He dropped him four times, I believe, something in that range, and got the stoppage. After this, he fought Eduardo Ramirez, who's always been a respectable, durable fighter, who has good activity and always comes to fight, and he d demolished him in two rounds. He knocked him out in the second round, put him away. That's very impressive, in my opinion, because Eduardo Ramirez was, in my opinion, genuinely a respectable opponent. I thought he would actually probably take Isak Cruz some rounds. I actually think I picked Cruz to win on points, and he completely proved me wrong and knocked him out in the second. Now, this is one of Isak Cruz's inconsistent performances. Now, we have referenced, I've brought up some other inconsistent outings he's had. 
the Francisco Vargas one, the Jose Matias Romero one. And after this, as I said, he beat Tank and he beat Gambo and he beat Ramirez. That's three fights in a row where he looked really good and really impressive and looked like a true contender. When he took on Giovanni Cabrera on the Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence undercard, he looked very bad, guys. Now, he won the fight. It was a split decision, but I thought he won pretty clearly. I think I had it like 116, 111 for Cruz. There's a point deduction against Cruz in the eighth round for as Isa Cruz, and I apologize that my video is glitching out a little bit. Nowhere near as marketable as Isa Cruz. He does not bring as much to the table, and I have no clue why they almost robbed Isa Cruz. They almost gave it to, to Giovanni Cabrera. Isa Cruz clearly won that fight, dominated. However, with me going on that tangent about why Rob and Cruz would have been stupid, and him only winning a split decision when it should have been unanimous, he looked really bad in that fight. He couldn't really hurt Cabrera. He was hitting Cabrera with some clean flush shots, and Cabrera was walking through them comfortably. He was taking the shots very well, actually, and I felt that Cruz definitely had one of his worst outings. He got the job done and got the win, but I wasn't impressed. Now, after this fight, a lot of people were questioning how good of a fighter Cruz is once again. This is what I mean of Isak Cruz. He's a very good fighter. He clearly won that fight. The average score on box rec was 116-111, and Cabrera's not a bum or a slouch either, but... He should have beaten him easier. He probably should have gotten him out of there, to be honest, or at least won a much wider decision. A lot of people are questioning him, and the problem with Cruz is that he is pretty inconsistent. We've seen a few outings in his career where he should have looked better than he did. He'll fight really good against someone like Tank, and then he'll look really bad against Giovanni Cabrera or against Francisco Vargas. Now, after this Cabrera fight, a lot of people are questioning how good he was, and when the Rolando Romero fight was set, there were people, even people that I knew in person, that were picking Roley to win, and I never saw it. I always thought Cruz would beat him, because I'm thinking about it this way, right? Roley's not going to be able to stop Isak Cruz. He's not going to be able to put him away. If Tank couldn't, I don't care if Tank was injured, Tank still had power in his hands. If Tank couldn't, and Tank couldn't even drop him, or really even hurt him at any point in the fight... How can Roley, right? And then there was a part of me that was like, can Roley win a decision against Cruz if he outworks him and outboxes him? There's a better chance of that happening than him stopping Cruz, but I also doubted it because Roley is not that good fundamentally. He was outworking Tank, but he was not outboxing Tank. He was outworking him. That's why he was winning rounds. He was never outboxing Tank. He was never keeping him on the end of the jab and, and avoiding Tank's work and outboxing him. He was just outworking him. If he outworks Cruz, I think he's going to get chin-checked. If he tries to outbox Cruz, he's just going to get pressured and stopped. So I picked Cruz to win, and he looked very, very good. It was a very dominant win, even more dominant than I expected. And he got Roley out of there and looked very impressive. So after giving you guys a little rundown of Cruz's resume and what he's done, how good of a fighter I think he is, I've referenced in the video how good I think he is, but I'm going to elaborate on that. I feel that Cruz is a very... I don't know what's the right word to put here. I'll say this. He's definitely above... He's definitely above anyone in that weight that isn't a champion, arguably. I mean, there's a few guys in the weight like Ryan Garcia and Regis and those guys. But overall, he's in the upper echelon of the weight class. But I just don't see him being the true cream of the crop. I see him being close, but I see him not being quite there. I would pick Devin to beat him. I'd pick Tiafimo. I'd pick Sabriel Matias to beat him. Honestly, if Josh Taylor is himself, I would also pick Josh Taylor to beat him. But I do think that Isak Cruz is a very good opponent, a very good name. And he's not all hype. He is better than I thought he was. And I feel that he he truly is a, a respectable name in the sport of boxing and a very good fighter overall. He has a lot of power in his hands. He has a very good chin. He always comes to fight. He rises to his level of opponents because we've seen him fight better against better opposition. The Cruz that fought Romero did not look the same as the Cruz that fought Giovanni Cabrera. And I think Isaac Cruz, Isaac Cruz, is a very good fighter. And... I can't wait to see what he does next. I'm looking forward to the rest of his career. And overall, I don't think he has pound-for-pound pound level ability or potential, but I do think he has a very solid name. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I don't think he's all hype, just making it clear. I also think he's one of the best in the weight class. I just don't think he's on the level of the main three champions. Have a good one, guys. God bless. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If I'm wrong, let me know. If you think I'm wrong, let me know, I should say. If you agree with me, elaborate as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. God bless. I'll see you guys later. Peace.